Hello, welcome to a new edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today I'm going to remedy uh, an omission. Um, I can't believe we have never done a Spiral Galaxies puzzle on the channel. Um, that is completely uh, remiss of us. Um, so we're going to take a look at one of those today, and I'll explain how the rules work in a moment. A um, couple of uh, quick mentions on the admin side, or really the support the channel side. Um, our Patreon puzzle for this month, December's Patreon reward puzzle, is going very well. We've had a, an awful lot of good feedback on it. So if you're not patrons and you do feel able to support the channel, it's massively appreciated by uh, Mark and me. And it's two bucks a month for the extra content. And the three bucks a month gets you a video on how to solve the extra content too. Um, and also on our classic Sudoku app, which came out just over a week ago, we've been absolutely bowled over by how well received um, the game is um, it really I've had so many emails about it it really is quite incredible uh, we're both a bit humbled by it to be honest um, we've got uh, it won't be that long before the first or well, the first update of five puzzles will be coming out and I'm really pleased to be able to tell you that um, Ashish Kumar the uh, the wonderful setter from India uh, is going to be providing uh, some of the puzzles for the updates over the coming months as well so more outstanding content now let's have a look at this puzzle though if you want to have a go by the way just click on the link under the video those of you who know how to play spiral galaxies and i'm sure a lot of you do um, and that'll take you to our software which should work quite well for spiral galaxies i'm hoping um, now this puzzle is also correcting an omission um, because this is by murat kantonta uh, who is the outstanding puzzle creator from turkey and um Murat is a regular contributor to gmpuzzles.com, uh, which is Thomas Snyder's puzzle site. Very worth taking a look at if you've not gone over there. Um, and um, Murat de designed this puzzle, um, so we're going to take a look at it in a moment. Let me get the instructions on the screen. Here we go. Um, so Spiral Galaxies, it's a region division puzzle. So what we need to do is we need to divide the grid into different areas. And you can see perhaps the easiest way to understand the puzzle is to look at the example on the screen here. Uh, and what you can see, hopefully if you study it, is that each area that we divide the grid into has to have rotational symmetry around a dot. So each area must have exactly one dot and that dot must be at the center of that region's rotational symmetry. So if we if we flip this, the um, area around 180 degrees, we will get something that looks absolutely identical. Um, and that's all there is, which is, I suppose, the mark of a, a classic puzzle. Now, some of you may have come across this puzzle uh, under the name Tentai Sho, which is its Japanese name. And in the Japanese version, it works exactly the same way, except some of the blocks or some of the circles are black circles. And when you finish the, the puzzle, you can color in all of the regions that have a black circle in them and it creates a picture. So if you do enjoy this puzzle and you've not tried um, either Spiral Galaxies or Tentai Show before, then, then just do a search on the Internet and you'll find some examples. And some of them are really cool. Um, and let's have a look at this one. Now, I imagine because this has appeared on gmpuzzles.com, this is not going to be a very easy puzzle. I didn't look at the timestamps for it. Let's just, let me check those, one second. Okay, so if you're a world-class solver, you're looking at three minutes for this puzzle, and an expert solver's still looking at 11 minutes, so it clearly isn't gonna be a total walk in the park. Um, now, how do you start the puzzles? Well, often it's best to look at the uh, circles that breach two squares like the this circle here obviously those two squares have to be connected similarly here they have to be connected this square can't rotate anywhere there's no way this square can go and join up with any other square because once we rotate it we'll hit another region so this square sits on its own which means this square here must be green or purple, but we don't know which. It could go that way or it could go that way. And we're going to have to use logic to work out which of those will be necessary. Now, again, this square can't rotate anywhere because it's bounded on the left side by the edge of the grid and it's bounded on the top side by another region. So there's simply no way I can include this square or this square. 
because through once I rotate, I'll breach one of the conditions. Ah, now that square is interesting. Look, that's got this circle connects four squares together. So that is quite powerful. Let's make that blue. Now, do I have any tips for spiral galaxies? Um, not that many. Um, my main, the main thing I try and do is to spot squares that are weak. And what do I mean by weak square? Well, I mean a square that can't connect to very many circles, hopefully to only one circle. So if we can find we can find squares like that that will be helpful when we can that square let's just think about this square what square can this cell or what circle can this square sorry connect to now the most natural area it connect to is this two by two blue area but you can see that once we reflect around this circle, that would give us this square here, which we know is not part of the same region because it contains its own circle. So this, well, this is, this is good actually, because this square also can't connect to this circle. I already talked about this circle just being a single celled region. So how do we connect this square to some other circle? It's gonna to have to come this way. Um, so I'll use purple again. Now, it can't connect to this one because the rotation would take it this way and it would hit another circle. So it's going to have to come upwards. And, oh, and it can't connect to this circle because watch what happens. If I connect to this circle, let's make that, then you can see that the way that shape would develop it would have to include these purple squares here because that's the reflection and it can't because that would hit another circle so that is very interesting so this purple area must I think connect to this circle because anything else if we connect to this circle for example will end up off the right hand side of the grid and this circle would end up off the left side of the grid. Yeah, that's right. So it must connect to that circle. Now, again, what we can do, the moment we know this circle is part of this region, we can simply add the reflected squares. Oh, hang on. Sorry about that brief uh, child interruption. So we can add the reflection here. So I want to add those two and these three. They must all be purple and change the color of that one. Let's make that one that color, whatever color that is. So now what else can we, ah, now actually that square, well, the same logic applies. Ah, no, that square could, no, it can't. This square is interesting now. This square, if it's connected to the blue area, would reflect onto that square, which we know must be purple. Now, as this square, therefore, must also be purple, so must that square. Oh, I think I've just had a shank there. There we go. So this must be, these must be purple as well. Now, let's just check, can it, no, it can't go that way. So th this purple area cannot rotate around there because that would take us this way. We'd hit lots of other stuff. So it does, it does just develop straight like this. And this square is almost a weak square, but it can connect to this region and it could also connect to this circle here. So I don't want to do anything with that yet. So the next square that I think is weak is this one. What on earth can this square connect to? I mean, this is a very good example of a spiral galaxies puzzle, by the way, because the logic is very tight sometimes with these puzzles it's very difficult to you know you sort of end up guessing pencil and eraser style but here it's been very cleverly designed now what on earth can it must it must be that one mustn't it because let's think about this if we reflect around any square in this row we're off the end of the grid. So these are all out and anything below it is out. And the only cell that, therefore that I think we can get to legitimately 
is this one. I don't think that's likely. Uh, no, we end up off the end of the grid, don't we? Because we have to come down to this level. And this level, if you look, is three squares below this one. So we'd end up above the grid here if we try and introduce these squares here to this circle. So this and this are connected. Make these blue again. Now once we know that these are connected and they're blue, that one is also blue. We know it must come along here. So those are blue and therefore these are blue. And we know this square, look, this square is going to be if we try and attach this square to another circle other than this one, it's totally isolated. It can never reach another circle other than that. So this is also blue, therefore that must also be blue. Now that square... No, that doesn't work. Um, the, these two squares are also connected to this for the same reason. Oh, now that square. This square is an interesting one because this square cannot um, cannot be part of the blue area because if it is, that square would have to be part of the blue area and it's not. So this square is now the weak square. What circle can this square connect to? And I think there's only one candidate and it's that one. So we're actually going to get that area as well. Now these... This, 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 this circle here isolates these two squares. So we actually know that that must also be an area. It's a cool puzzle, eh? I really, I really enjoy these. I don't do them very often, but um, when I do do them and I do a good one, I wish I did do them more often. Now, now that square is an interesting square too, because that square's reflection in this circle is that square, which we know is part of this region. In fact, this region is forced. It can't extend in any direction. If it extends up, it would break the blue area. If it extends this way, it would its reflection would be off the end of the grid. So this area is bounded. Um, this area is bounded. This, this circle here, it can't go anywhere. This circle can't go anywhere. Uh, I'll, make, I'll make them both red, actually. Same is true of that one. Um, now, so this square here, oh, now actually, no, it could go like that, couldn't it? Ah, oh, so hang on, this square must be part of the blue region because it can't get to another circle. Wow, that was a surprise. But I think logically that must be right. <laughs> um, so how does that go? It's going to go up. How many does it go up? It's so easy to make a mistake when you do this. <laughs> it goes like that, look. There we go. Um, and that square must also be blue. So this square is blue. And we've got to be a bit careful here, look. This could be an area. Or, and there is another possibility, look, because it's possible this square is blue. This square would therefore be a single square, and then this square would join the purple area. So I'm going to leave that alone and come back to it. In fact, perhaps this square is the one we need to focus on, because what, what circle can this attach to if it's not part of the blue area? It would have to come. It can never come to this one, because then its reflection would take it downwards into another area. So it would have to come to this square, and that's, that, that breaks because the reflection of these three cells around this area is those three cells, and it hits, hits another circle. So in fact, that square is blue, which means this square is blue, which means this is on its own, and this square and this square join the purple area. Oh, ah, okay, now that square, look, that can now only join this area, so that fixes that. This, those squares must also be an area. There's no way I'd, I think that you can get this square attached to any other region. It's either in the purple area, which it can't be, 
or it's in this with this square cell, which means it goes up like this. So we're still left with a problem on the right. What air, what circle does that connect to? Oh, good grief, it's going to be this one. <laughs> Look at this. So if it did that, yes, that Look at that, it just works. <laughs> it's going to give us an issue figuring out what's going on in this region, but this square here can only connect to this circle. And there's just enough room. So we know this is the start of this region, but it's not going to be the end of it because this square cell needs to have rotational symmetry. Now, it can do that, for example. And that does work. Oh, goodness. Yes, that's right. Look, because if I make this rotational symmetry, I basically make this circle here as big as possible. Now I need both of these squares to be red. Can they both be red? Let's see. That square would have its reflection here. This square would have its reflection there. And it just works. Now this circle, we need to get this cell into something. So that is a sort of straight line of 10 cells across the top of the grid. That means those must do that. This does this and therefore finally I think we're going to be able, let's make that one grey to show it was our last one. So there we go. Fascinating. Loved it. Um, let me know how you got on. Let me know how quickly you solved it. And most importantly, I guess, let me know if you want to see more Spiral Galaxies puzzles on the on the channel. Or maybe we should do a Tentai show, which would be um, you know, which would have a picture at the end. Um, but very, very enjoyable. I enjoyed it. Uh, as I say, always keen on the feedback. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.